okay so this is the today's session second live session i am testing on this vertical short feed uh, to understand if it works for discussing the daily some inputs or cases or experiences which we come across so let's see how many people join if people are joining then we can continue with this else we'll continue with our regular shorts and videos which we upload so i'll wait for a few minutes let me check just hold on i received few questions i will try to answer those okay so somebody has joined i think uh subrat uh the voice is not okay because good morning good evening the voice is not uh, li- uh, clear today let's check now the how the voice is coming now okay so i think 2025 people have joined and again welcome to you all so this is the second live uh, session so the pattern of our live session will be like that uh, i'll start a live feed of uh, some 5 to 10 minutes in this vertical video then i'll go through your comments and try to answer them in the same sitting or in the next sitting so today uh, means few days back i uh, got a question from uh, subrat subrat is uh, doing bnb and he asked me what is my personal experience regarding the uh agents which needs to be used in intubation of a crashing patient usually in the critical care whether it's an emergency or your icus so what sedatives or what uh, uh, analgesia and what muscle relaxant uh, we should use so basically this is not a straight forward answer we cannot pinpoint any one agent uh, of which is ideal in all the scenario so if typically we consider like we have a septic patients usually in critical care the biggest risk is the patient is in hypotension or patient is crashing so what we should do obviously you must have taken vasopressors or inotropes for handling the pressure and when you want to intubate so the agent should be such that it doesn't uh, make the patients more hypotensive usually what we give in most of the icus is benzodiazepine and in that is midazolam which causes uh, hypotension so we should not use midazolam in that particular scenario what we can do is we can go with our uh, uh, only analgesic like uh, fentanyl and we can increase the dose of fentanyl then fentanyl can be given if usually these patients are not very much irritable and they get settled by the this uh, fentanyl other agent which will be useful in this scenario which my colleague uh, dr prerna is very comfortable with is ketamine so ketamine may, uh, brings up the blood pressure it not only may, means uh, makes the patient it doesn't causes affect make the patient hypotensive it increases uh, if not increasing it doesn't make the patient hypotensive so ketamine can be used in that particular scenario so ketamine fentanyl these can be used at times they are suffice more practical if you don't have ketamine and uh, or any other agent then you can do is you take the patient on uh, vasopressors and give a slight very slight dose of uh, benzodiazepine midazolam very 1 mg or not more than in any case 2 mg because it will cause the patient hypotensive when you can do a small amount of fluid now comes another scenario in which you have patients of neurological patient where the patient is having high blood pressures and there is raised uh, icp okay uh, uh, raised icp and then uh, in such patients you can use propofol which will in- help to reduce a little bit of icp and also will uh, make uh, the patient's blood pressure settle down the blood pressures ketamine should not be used in this particular scenario because it can cause cause high blood pressure and raised icp so in neurological patient you can use propofol you can use benzodiazepines 
you can use fentanyl but make sure the patient is completely relaxed you can use muscle relaxant after giving these agents because otherwise if the patient coughs during uh, this uh, uh, the co patient coughs during this intubation procedure it can raise the icp and make the patient coma Another uh, agent which Dr. Kostov has rightly pointed out in septic or hypotensive patient is etomidate. It is also short acting and it will also doesn't cause fall in blood pressure. So practically uh, these, these are my approaches. So we have two uh, scenarios. One the patient is hypotensive and the pa another one patient is hypertensive and neuro patient. So in neuro patient it is very straightforward. You can give propofol, you can give metazolam, benzodiazepine, you can use fentanyl and then give, but make sure the patient, you can give them muscle relaxant also so that patient is completely knocked down and while you are intubating, we don't want the patient to get cough. In hypotensive, in rapid sequence intubation, use fentanyl, you can use fentanyl or uh, then your ketamine and etomidate in that scenarios and take the patients on supports and also uh, what you do uh, you give muscle relaxant only when you are pretty much sure that you will be able to secure the airway and the airways visualize so these were my inputs anything else you can ask in the question or we can have a detailed uh, session on that the point here of this daily live stream is we can share answer i can answer a question and share good cases which we saw um, in our day-to-day -day practice and regarding the yesterday update of that patient, which was carotid artery dissection with uh, SAH, with uh, long bone fracture, fat embolism, and then uh, popliteal vein thrombosis. So uh, we have we decided to go for tracheostomy, and then we'll start low molecular weight. But in case, this is the day three of the patient with uh, with giving consent. So this was my six to seven eights minute. Okay, so I think you must have liked it. Uh, if you, you still have any doubt for regarding this session, you can uh, post in the comments and also do let me know whether people are liking this daily few minutes of uh, daily discussions, daily live feed in which we can share, I can answer your questions and also the daily updates, uh, daily things which we see in this. Okay, so one very uh, good question is uh, Satyajit Sapute. Sir, please explain about sedation, various cases like renal compromise and hepatic failure and hypotensive and doses. So this goes in a long way because for short term, uh, you can use any one thing and the doses and all other things will require a long um, uh, video. I can share uh, the links on the forum, I think on ESBICM, if you can ask there. You can find the doses anywhere. I will suggest you the books in the comment or the link page. Costo has asked another very good thing. Apnea time for ARDS is very short. At times we have to struggle during India intubation. Any tips? Yes, Costo, you this is a very good question. What Costo wants to ask is in, a, in any hypoxic patients where uh, you do, where the, the safe apnea time is short means the time from which you stop the embu and then you start, uh, put your hold your laryngoscope and you intubate that duration in that duration patient can get desaturated like an ARDS patient. So what you can do is pre-oxygenate such patients with high oxygen. Uh, usually the saturations doesn't pick up in such patients. It reaches somewhere 90, 92 with very much struggle. The only thing is in such patients is you need to be very fast with it. Always take a low dose vasopressors in the such patient because they crash very fast. Like you, you can take noradrenaline or two three ml doses of adrenaline, uh, two three ml of adrenaline for such patients. Then so that it doesn't become uh, hypoxia or bradycardia can be avoided. And do the embu in in a slightly 30 45 propped up position. You do the embu pre-oxygenate the patient to a good level of oxygen and then when your oxygen level reaches to a certain point do whatever satisfactory 85 90 then 
make the patient flat and then immediately try to intubate uh, in in if you if you make the patient flat and then you are again uh, struggling to find the airway again make the prop patient prop up go do a good ambu and then do with the help of your colleague or somebody else do a bougie or uh, like that and then intubate the patient and hyperventilate such patients like that so these are my tips which we have used and in uh, also in such patient what you can do is if the patient struggle too fast you can give the benzodiazepines or any fentanyl anything and then rocuronium is very good for short very short relaxant in case you are able to visualize the airway only then any relaxant should be given if if you are not able to visualize the airway don't give it otherwise the patient will crash so i think kostop this uh, will uh, answer your query if still you have doubt you can uh, you can uh, uh, post in the comment vikas has asked i want to know when to intubate and want to into rt suspected head injury patient so this is also good if you go by the guidelines what they will say in uh, whenever the gcs of the patient is less than 8 you should intubate the patients basically in the problem in head injury in rt patients the target is we should prevent secondary brain injury whatever injury has happened to the brain we should avoid further injuries which are called secondary injuries so we should avoid hypoxia we should avoid fever we should avoid raised co2 like that so if you are if if, if already if the gc is down or if you feel the most important the patient is not able to maintain the airway if the patient is pulling the secretion or patient is going down even if the gcs is somewhere around 9 10 but the patient is not able to maintain the airway he is not able to cough out that's the time when you should uh, uh, that's the time you should intubate also if there is a massive bleed or something in your scan you are seeing that there is edema and this patient gcs is going down you should uh, electively intubate such patient so it will avoid hypoxia and it will help you to hyperventilate for few hours so to decrease the icp and buy time for the definitive treatment i hope because this helps tarod is saying that my voice is not audible uh, is my voice not audible to anyone i think everybody is able to listen uh, goro okay i have provided you the sedation protocol in icu you will try to provide in the link or in the community post so this was about 10 to 12 minutes of today's uh, discussion if you have any doubts we can ask and do let me know whether this is a good we can daily or every 48 hours you know, once in we four five times we can connect and answer your questions which you post on the uh, set, uh, uh, youtube comments and forum and mail me so that we can uh, discuss and learn together thank you and do also if you have not applied for that zoom meeting so you can go and apply because we will be having a zoom meeting with 90 members across the world or uh, we have applications for some 15 16 nations so we'll try to accommodate maximum possible but applications are available if i am not uh, wrong uh, easy easy as i am an icu nurse in australia been watching your videos to explain you may difficult concept is plus your personally calm message thank you thank you easy for your comments and sick medicos uh, cyc medicos okay thank you thank you for all the uh, uh, enthusiasm so that we can learn together and see you uh, next time uh, see you next time yeah, before ending one uh, there is an update most of the time rt patient are in alcohol influence in such cases it is difficult to prove no so what vikas is asking in rt patients they are mostly in the if they are under the influence of alcohol so it is not sure whether the gcs is down because of the uh, injury or whether the gcs is down because of the alcohol no matter what vikas understand no matter whatever the condition if the patient is not able to maintain his airway if the patient is not able to if the patient is not able to what you say uh, Uh, maintain the airway if the pooling secretion in the uh, airway is compromised he is aspirating then better to go and intubate we can later on extubate this patient it will help so whatever the etiology if the patient is not able to maintain the airway and respiration then you, you should intubate okay so snow your question will take in the next uh, when neuro phase we discussion difference between aphasia dysarthria and dysphasia will take later on So thank you thank you for your enthusiasm 
and do apply in that zoom meeting link which is available on the youtube community post we'll have will it will be full weekend a full week where we'll have different different activities on crossing 100k on youtube thank you good night see you in the next live hopefully tomorrow thank you